prototyping stuff with Python AI. I've been using Claude, I've been using OpenAI, and what I've been doing is when I have new ideas for features in Speedify, have them make Python programs. Up until now, what's happened is I, I, I've been doing this and I've been playing with it. When I get something really good, I take it to you or I take it to Brian and say, look what I built. And if I convince you, then you guys throw away all my code and you rewrite it like C++. But I did something crazy on Saturday. I took my Python prototype and I asked it to rewrite it in Rust. And it rewrote in Rust. And it wasn't like line for line the same. It was a properly structured Rust program. And there were three or four bugs. You know, I tested it. I said, oh, it does, it's doing this wrong. It's doing that wrong. And it fixed them. And now I have a Rust program. Fast native code. I'm starting to wonder, does this change things, right? I mean, I kind of like the idea that I, I built prototypes and I messed around. I didn't have to worry about code quality at all because I was throwing them out or you were throwing them out. <laughs> I was just trying to prove that something was a good idea. And so doing it in Python, that was lightning fast. Fast. Should I just be prototyping in Rust in the first place? It's worth trying, but yeah, you might run into some of the same headaches of having to iterate a bunch where if you kind of get something as a working model of what you want that it can, that can kind of follow and convert. Yeah, I don't so know. So it's you, worth you, you think the AIs find it as much easier to write Python as the humans find it to write Python? <laughs> it's certainly worth trying something in Rust, especially if it's a standalone little thing. Try write it in Rust first and, and see what happens. I mean, I think even without AI prototyping stuff in Python, yeah, if you're trying to prototype something in Rust, you run into a lot of headaches of having to make sure the types are all correct in it and everything and you can, oh, yeah. you can slow things down. So yeah, I think. So yeah, actually I started the idea of prototyping ideas in Python before there was AI. That was something I was doing for a while. The whole stream section of Speedify started off as a, a standalone Python program that I ran next to Speedify to see what my streams were. And once I thought I had it right and the icon colors right, then I took it to you guys. So a lot of tries that were terrible before I finally got something that was right. If I can just take the Python and have it rewritten into native, I mean, is that good enough? I don't know. It depends what you're making, I think. I think there's some cases where you might miss out on some of the features of something like Rust where that involve more of a conceptual understanding that the eyes might not have yet. And maybe maybe someday they will, or maybe if you prompt them the right way, they'll they'll do it that way. But like certainly things around program design and around the type system, you can for, enforce certain behaviors through the type system, things like that. Um, with, you know, with Rust, that it might not design it to do that, especially if it's coming from Python. I was really surprised how different the, the Rust code was. My Python program, I have these wrappers, the the Speedify Pi wrappers around Speedify CLI, which is this library I've been working on for ages. And then you know my Python program called that library that called the CLI. When I had translated to Rust, it did didn't wrap that library or build that. It just built one function that called the couple things I was using out of that Speedify library. Yeah, right? all, all my comments are based on, I haven't seen what code your, your AI <laughs> put out. So yeah, I don't know, I'm guessing. I haven't spent a whole lot of time looking at AI outputted, you know, translated dress code or anything. Honestly, I'm on the $20 a month plan for each. And what I found is I go and go and go and one of them eventually cuts me off. And then I switch to the other one. I go and go and go and by then the, the first one's back. Doesn't seem like I, I need the super expensive plans. Just couple $20 a month plans. And I figured out a few tricks, namely, I've taken all the documentation for the Speedify CLI, the Speedify API, the Speedify for Teams APIs, everything we have, I've turned them all into Markdown and drop in this directory where I prototype stuff. So the AIs have right there access to all the secrets of Speedify, not their secrets, they're, they're published. Uh, but I make sure they're right there so it can read it. And I just ask it to try stuff and build new things on top of Speedify. And it just turns it out. I've heard comments that we use the AIs really differently. I'm constantly asking it, I don't like this, how would you fix this? And I've heard you're using it differently. Yeah, it depends what I'm doing. So if I'm writing something standalone or something new, then yeah, prompting it, okay, I wanna make this something small. But I find a lot of times working within a large existing code base where it might not have the full context or understanding of, of everything going on, a lot of times it's, it's more difficult if you just tell it what you want. Maybe I'm not prompting it right, but sometimes. So the thing but, yeah. I've been doing is trying to give it more context. Start off and you say, you know, analyze this code base. And it turns out a markdown note for itself about what the code base is. And then I'll say, now we're going to work on the graph. Analyze how the graph works. And I'll sit there for two minutes and then churn out a whole thing about how the graph works. And then I'll start making changes, ask it to make changes to the graph. And then we move on to the menu. And I'm like, now we're gonna work on the settings menu. I find it easier if I know what direction I'm going, I just kind of start going that direction. And it's very good at predicting and auto-completing things basically for me. You know, I can write a function name and it fills in the rest of the function for me. So if I already kind of have in my mind the design of what I want, I kind of outline things and let it fill in stuff for me. And sometimes I gotta tweak it and fix things. And then also from a research standpoint, before I do something talking with the AI about different options, it could be very useful. Sometimes it comes up with incorrect information, which can be frustrating. It's like, oh yeah, sure, you can do it this way. Yeah, a lot of times it could be useful for kind of developing ideas or ways to approach things. So thank you guys. This was a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I know you are super busy. So that's it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you all online.